Good evening, everybody. My name is Evan, and with me today is Olivia and Alex. We're the Dream Dearborn team, and we're here to present our capstone project called The Art Wall. The Art Wall is focused on creating a platform for artists to give and receive feedback online. We conducted user research by benchmarking the pros and cons of current platforms. Additionally, interviews were held with artists regarding the, their current feedback process, struggles, and platforms used. The purpose of this study is to research and design an online social environment where artists can share and give feedback to one another's art. This intended design space would offer feedback for different art categories as well as different skill levels. The Art Wall's objectives is to create a digital platform with tools specifically for artists to receive feedback from other artists. And this led us to our three main research questions being one, what is the current artistic feedback process? Two, what are the struggles with the current artistic feedback process? And three, what online tools do artists use for feedback, if applicable? And switching off to initial research, I'm gonna hand it off to my good friend, Alex. Thanks, Evan. So last semester, we started off with the initial research phase. Um, we began by conducting a literature review to evaluate the current state of feedback platforms and those that are geared towards artists. We found that there are actually very limited numbers of platforms for artists specifically to get feedback. However, social media is the primary space where artists share their work to gain exposure by capturing that large audience. Um, best feedback practices, such as being specific, balanced, and conducted in a positive tone, are not applied consistently throughout social media, ultimately not making it the best space to get feedback, while it is a great place to show finished artwork. After completing our literature review, we jumped into further user research through benchmarking and interviews. We reviewed 11 online platforms and compared the pros and cons of each. Out of the 11 platforms we reviewed, there were only two that were somewhat dedicated to artistic feedback, but not what we were looking for. Additionally, we interviewed six participants with varying artistic backgrounds and skill levels and collected data to identify the user themes. So we took all of the user feedback identified through the interviews um, and put them into an affinity diagram to better understand the different categories within the themes. The two major buckets um, were feedback in general, and also the artistic process. So some of the primary user themes identified for feedback were feedback is almost always wanted. It needs to be specific. Friends and family are the primary resource. Um, artist expertise matters. Users are concerned with hurting others' feelings. They don't expect a reward. Online spaces are not frequently used for feedback, and it is generally wanted towards the end. Regarding the artistic process, um, we found that the art process begins with exploration. Client projects have different expectations compared to like a hobby or something like that. Um, privacy and protection are very important. Artists post final work to social media and different artists struggle at different points. So after conducting that initial research, uh, we were able to translate the information to identify two personas as our target audience or users. First, we have Caroline, who's a career artist and wants to help growing artists by giving feedback, but making sure it's not too harsh and is given in a respectful way. She highly values expertise when giving feedback. Um, and like I said, you know, wants to help other artists grow around her. Our second persona is Hannah. Um, she's more of a hobbyist who seeks growth in her artistic skills and style. She doesn't really know a lot of other artists, but wants feedback that is specific to her needs to continue developing. So in summary, our initial research consisting of literature review, benchmarking, interviews, the affinity diagram and personas led us to generate our six key insights from our users. Um, starting with feedback is wanted. You know, artists do desire a platform where work at all stages can be shared, um, getting feedback to improve and grow. We wanna make sure that feedback is specific um, so that it's actually helpful in developing their work. Expertise matters. They find value in that um, to provide feedback in different creative spaces coming from people that have experience in those spaces. Um, artists prefer to anonymously share their work in the early stages. However, they want their name attached to final pieces, um, highlighting the privacy and protection that we can provide. Um, all stages of work. So different artists struggle at different points and they want feedback at all stages. 
and empathy awareness. The concern with hurting other people's feelings, they want to make sure that feedback is given in a positive way or more constructive criticism rather than just kind of being harsh. And I'll hand it back over to Evan to discuss our ideation phase. Hi, it's me again. And we're going to move over to insight statements and how might we questions. To guide our insight process, our ideation process rather, our team created incitement statements from our affinity diagram and translated those into how, how might we questions. And using the example feedback needs to be specific that we got from our affinity diagram, we transformed that into three incitement statements that's listed below. And essentially an incitement statement is something where it's, it's a more like filled out example in more detail. So instead of this feedback needs to be specific, it becomes artists want to give and receive feedback that is relevant. So it has more context to it. And then we did a lot of those and the, we eventually converted those into how might we questions. So for the next example with that would be give artists tool or how might we give artists tools to provide specific feedback. And we did that because it's really helpful in the brainstorming process to have those ready. So when we do go there and start coming up with some ideas, we don't really have to go back and figure out, oh, did this, like what they talked about, is this what this is, or is this a good question? It's already determined there. And we just have them in the back burner and pull them forward when we're ready to use them. So when it time came to doing idea generation, we, we went through a lot of the methods and kind of figure out which ones we wanted to use. And based on the circumstances of kind of having a limited time, limited time to work on ideation, we determined that Crazy Ace would be the best method for us. And Crazy Ace is it's not a too crazy, it's not the you know, it's pretty simple what the concept is for the process. Basically, for our group, we had three minute rounds where we pulled out those how might we questions out and we answered those within those three given min minutes. And at the most, we can come up with eight ideas per round. And since there's three of us and if everything goes well, we could generate 24 ideas per round. And in between the rounds, we would discuss what we came up with. And then from there, sometimes we came up with some ideas from that process too, but put on the side. But either way, with each round, when we concluded, we recorded it on a document listing what we came up with. And we did those a couple of rounds before we kind of found out or kind of determined really that we think we had enough ideas to move forward. And we kind of had an idea about that because there were some ideas that jumped out at us as really good ones during these rounds. But if worst case scenario, if we went a little bit further and we didn't have enough ideas when it came to idea, idea filtering, then we just were resorted back to this process a few more rounds or maybe used another method, but we didn't had we didn't have to do that in this case. And yeah, we just we yeah, we can go for it. <laughs> so we ended up having those ideas there and we filtered through a lot of them until we had our really good ideas. And we got to this point with the idea filtering process involving the idea selection criteria. And this was a good metric to determine what our, what our good ideas are from our wonderful ideas. And we resulted with five points that we were trying to look for, for a wonderful idea. First one is being feasibility. Is the idea something that we can create and test feasibly? Also point two, does it meet our user needs? Three, novelty. Is it a unique and innovative idea? Point four being helpfulness, does it actually help our users out? And the last one would be aligns with project goals. And with all this in mind, when we were using the criteria on these final ideas, this is like the championship of ideas. Like this is like the best of the best here. It's kind of like a do or die situation with this where it's like the best of the best here. And we determine this through using the idea book, which it is what it sounds like. So the idea book is a book of ideas. And in this point, we really determine what was the best here. And 
for example, here, this is a glimpse into our idea book. So here on the left, we have the markup feature. And then on the right hand side, we have the kiosk. And for each one of these ideas that are at this point in time, we gave it a description, a, a section for fu the function of how it worked, and the overall rating that we gave from the prior slide involving the criteria. And in this case, the markup knocked out of the park, got five out of five, it's a great idea, and we ended up incorporating into the art wall. The kiosk, on the other hand, it was a good idea. It was very unique. We thought it was great, but it just in this case, logistically, we couldn't really do it, especially with the feasibility criteria. That's where it kind of fell short big time on this one. And it would have been something we would have pushed back. And if we continued with this project further on, this would have been something we would revisit later on where we incorporated these other features. And especially if, you know, COVID and everything, if things gotten better, which hopefully it sounds like things are now, then this could have been something we could have revisited later on. And with a conceptual design, I will hand it off to my other good friend, Olivia. Thanks, Evan. Ooh, one second, there we go. Okay, so as Evan talked about, um, moving forward, we decided our main idea was gonna be the markup feature, which allows users to upload images to a social media site um, and markup or circle um, certain parts of their um, artwork that they want uh, feedback on. And so in addition to that main idea, we had some other universal features we wanted to include um, into our prototype. So uh, the first universal feature is tagging. So being able to tag posts that users upload um, to give more specific feedback. Um, next is um, being anonymous. So um, making sure that people when they post can post anonymously, but that commenters can't. Uh, that way we kind of remove some of that um, negativity that can come in when people can post anonymously or give feedback anonymously. Um, we also wanted to include a timeline feature so people could create uh, projects um, and upload to those projects over time and view their progress. Um, another feature we wanted was the ability to rate feedback. So we wanted some way for people to, that post their feedback to be able to rate um, the feedback that they received from commenters to sort of highlight um, the best of the best. And lastly, we also wanted to include the option for people to make groups um, within the social media site to account for anything um, that we didn't uh, foresee as a category moving forward. Um, and also at this stage, we created some conceptual storyboards to sort of talk about how and why someone might use the features um, that the art wall provides. Um, and to do that, we um, starred our personas uh, that um, we created early on, we put them in different scenarios um, and talked about again, how and why those personas would um, benefit from these features. So the first uh, storyboard has to do with Caroline. Again, she is our career artist. Um, so she's all about giving feedback. And in this scenario, she's trying to find a place to give feedback, um, but there's, she's just not really finding anything. Um, but she hears about the art wall and she joins it and she finds um, a post she can help with and is thrilled to discover that they have the markup and the tags that show specifically what that person wants feedback on and that she can give them the type of feedback that they're looking for. And then in our next storyboard, um, we have Hannah here. Again, Hannah's all about um, our hobbyist. She's you know newer, she's trying to uh, learn. And so she's trying to receive feedback. And for her, a big thing uh, for the art wall is gonna be that receiving feedback aspect. Because in her scenario, you'll see at the start, um, she at first looks to her family for feedback, um, but when she gets it from her family, of course, they're like, oh, this is so great. It's the best you know, painting I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and that's not really what she's looking for. She wants super critical feedback. Um, she wants something specific to her needs and her field. So she goes to the art wall, um, she posts her work and is able to find that feedback and really uh, learn from it and grow. So then moving into creating the low fidelity prototype um, and sort of implementing these features, uh, a big thing that we did early on was lay out the information architecture. So how the site was gonna be structured, where those features would live. Um, we just said we wanted to map that out early on. So we had some sort of roadmap um, moving into the low fidelity prototype. 
And then here are some images of the low fidelity prototype. We're gonna talk more about the prototype later on um, and show some of the functions with it. Um, but here are just some screenshots of the initial version, um, sort of just defining some of the visual styles since visuals are very important uh, to artists and to this topic. So making sure um, that you know, displaying their artwork properly um, is accounted for. And the low fidelity version also had some basic functionality and showed some screens, but it wasn't very in depth at this stage. And again, just talking about how we translated what we found in our user study into our design. And um, we sort of talked about, again, the markup and tagging features. That was about, um, from our user study, people talking about how they wanted their feedback um, to be specific. So the markup and tagging features really highlight um, that aspect. And there's other things too that um, little points that we found um, from our user study, we tried to translate into different um, aspects of the design. Uh, so for example, different artists struggle at different points. Um, translating that into the conceptual design, we um, added a feature where when you tag something, you can tag what stage the progress is in. So people know if you tag something as in the early stages, they can kind of have a better reference of where you're at um, and make sure to give you again, that more specific feedback. And then moving into the detailed design, um, this is going from our low fidelity to our high fidelity prototype. Um, a big thing was with the low fidelity, it sort of had a good foundation, but it lacked depth. And we really wanted to make sure when we made the improvements to the high fidelity that we increased the depth of the prototype. And to do this, we defined um, early on what sort of tasks we wanted our users to test um, later on um, during usability testing, and then built the prototype around these tasks and supporting these tasks in the different ways you can um, complete these tasks. So our first task is uh, posting artwork to the drawing community. Again, so trying to uh, receive feedback. And then the second task is to give uh, feedback to another artist post. So again, um, giving that feedback, what does that look like? How do users um, uh, feel about that task? And then finally, reviewing and rating the feedback on your post. Um, so going back to your original post in task one um, and being able to look at the comments people give and how are people um, perceiving the uh, feedback they get to their own work. And then here is a walkthrough of the high fidelity prototype that we had uh, users test. So as you can see here, here's the home screen, shows some of the most popular posts. So our first task is to go to the drawing community and uh, post to it. So you can see other people's posts within the community and you can see the user is uploading their image. And here's the markup functionality. You can see it clicks. And so this person wants feedback on that leg. Uh, so they circle that leg. They talk a little bit more about it in the comment here. They post anonymously. And here you can see the tagging system at the bottom where they post that they're a novice, they want easy feedback, and this is an early stage project. Um, and this is them creating their project. So they submit that. And so now they're gonna give feedback to another person in this community. So they go to this clock drawing, um, they see the person's comment about what they wanna focus on. They see what other people have commented. Um, and so you can write your own comment and add a markup within the comment system as well, not just when you post um, your own work so that um, users can highlight what they want you to focus on. And so you can see there, there's uh, your comment and you get a little notification at the top letting you know, hey, your uh, original post has feedback uh, very quickly. <laughs> so this is reviewing and rating the feedback. Um, you can see the comments down there, but also on the site itself, it lets you see all the markups all in one place and see what the comments are at. And it takes you right there to that comment to see it in more detail. And then you can see here, we have our star system. Um, that way people can um, give uh, recognition to people who um, give the best kind of feedback, the most uh, intuitive feedback, kind of reward them in a way um, and just highlight the best of the best. Oops, oh no, there we go. Um, and then just talking a little bit about the final UI concept and what we we're kind of going for. We did we defined this pretty early on, even in the low fidelity stage, again, because visuals are so important to this concept. Um, but a big thing here, I would say with the color scheme to keep in mind is the um, dark theme. We really wanted those visuals and that color to pop. So that was very important for us to define early on. Um, we also went with the Roboto uh, font because it's very easy to read, um, very readable. Um, and that was some of the updates we made from the low fidelity to the high fidelity prototype. We tweaked the colors just a little bit to make them a little more accessible. Um, 
moving forward. And then lastly, we updated our storyboards to include some of the um, screens from our high fidelity prototype, again, to just be more specific um, to the challenges that these users face and how can our product help them. And so here we're gonna show this in a little more detail. Let me make this smoother. And then we do have our um, updated oops, storyboard here with uh, uh, Caroline. Again, her whole thing is um, giving feedback to people and how she can help. Alrighty, and I'm going to be handing it back over to Alex. Thank you, Olivia. Um, okay, so the last section of our project is the testing and evaluation of our high fidelity prototype through real users and uh, real artists. So our objectives were to test the main tasks of our prototype that Olivia mentioned. You need to gain feedback from users to make further improvements. Um, we use Zoom to conduct remote interviews while users um, use the remote access through our screen to use the prototype and conduct each task requested of them. We tested a total of five participants with varying art mediums and expertise, you know, wanted to really capture the career artists and also the hobbyists. Um, through testing, we were able to obtain qualitative data through interviewing the participants and quantitative data through task analysis and reading of the task completion. So like Olivia mentioned earlier, these are the three main tasks that we wanted to test, posting artwork to the drawing community, giving feedback to another artist's posts, and reading feedback on your own posts. So our test users were able to successfully complete all three of our tasks. Uh, we rated each task that the users completed on a scale from one to four, with one being the best or very easy to complete, while four is the worst and means it was not able to be completed at all. So our average overall was a 1.87, um, which is mostly influenced by posting artwork and giving feedback at a 1.8, while reading feedback was slightly more confusing to the users at a two. Um, we do think some technical issues through remote testing could have contributed to the higher ratings, but ultimately um, these are pretty good numbers overall. So after the task analysis was completed, we asked our test users general questions to gain understanding of the quality, general aesthetics, all of that of our prototype. Um, we received a lot of praise and criticism, mostly praise, that overall is easy to navigate and they liked the ability to have tags on posts, um, providing details such as skill level, the type of feedback wanted. And lastly, they appreciated 
the wide variety of art categories and said this application is something they would actually use. Um, like I said, while the majority of our user feedback was positive, we did receive some constructive criticism driving us to make further improvements within our prototype. So Adobe XD kind of had this lack of functionality to be able to develop a full-blown um, markup feature. So we added the ability to click to kind of showcase what we were trying to um, do, but it did cause some confusion to the users when trying to complete the task. They wanted to see uh, user credentials more clearly when receiving feedback and would like more ways to show that they're in agreement with some comments and the feedback that was received. So this feedback led us to make some slight changes on our final iteration. Um, so in the next couple of slides. So if you click screen, it should change. Yes. So in order to better highlight the user credentials, we added their title and the stars um, received right next to their name. So it's really clear. And we also added the ability um, for likes for the commenters and further clarification on the star or like favorite functionality. Um, some more updates that we made, um, you know, like we said, due to Adobe's XD's functionality, we were not able to develop the full markup tool, but we did find enhancements that we can make by adding a stamp feature shown on the right bottom side. Um, that way it's more clear to users when they're selecting a specific area, they don't necessarily have to draw a circle, but they can just click the circle and kind of paste it on the section that they want to review or that they want feedback on. Um, we did face some constraints and limitations throughout the project. Um, I've mentioned a couple of times Adobe XD and, and the trouble there. We also ran into some technical issues with remote testing um, that could have contributed to biased prototype evaluations. Um, because we did limit user testing to artists only, uh, we had a limited network to test with. And lastly, uh, limited time. You know, we would have liked to continue testing our prototype after changes were made based on the feedback from our test users to continue to develop further iterations and, and continuously improve over time. And then in conclusion, um, you know, we found through research that there isn't a platform specifically dedicated to feedback for artists and our solution is unique. Um, we were able to develop a working prototype that received positive feedback from our test users who thought it was straightforward and easy to use, allowing all of our main tasks to be completed successfully. Um, overall, we had a great time working together to develop the art wall, and we hope you enjoyed it as well. So thank you for attending our presentation, and we can open the floor to any questions you may have. Oh, hi, right, great. Any questions? Okay, Dr. Dr. Bao, Dr. Zhao, uh, question, comment? or suggestions? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I just have a quick uh, comment. Um, well, again, congratulations. It's a very interesting uh, study. So um, I guess my question is, uh, no question or comment. So have you like applied uh, what specific uh, um, design principles in developing your prototypes? I think we had some pattern in the design of making everything consistent within each page and kind of showing the tagging features um, underneath each picture that you see. So a lot of consistency in that design, uh, making sure the information is laid out properly so the users can find what they're looking for, specifically the hierarchy of um, choosing which community they're in. So we did, I don't know if you saw at the top, um, the menu, we put like kind of the top categories there, but if you click that further, it shows full blown, you know, all the art categories that you could possibly be within and kind of find that specific space. So yeah, lots of consistency and patterns and also the contrast with the, the dark background and the pop of color. Yeah, I have to say it's pretty artish style. Very interesting. Good job, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, Dr. Zhao? Um, I think I have a like a general question, or as well as I mentioned previously, I think one of the uh, presentation mentioned the inclusive design. Is um, I believe I didn't. We we didn't discuss in my class, but I think it can be an important aspect in the in the human centered design process to 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 include different type of uses. So if for this type of work, for example, color can be a very important, especially for those who are 
like colorblinded or that could be one thing to consider. Another thing is, I think I believe this capsule design is two semesters. I wonder uh, across two semesters, uh, do you guys have time to go through multiple iterations of the projects? Um, yes and no, like we had enough time to develop, I guess, two versions, but it would have been helpful to continue to test and just really like hash out any kinks that we had in our prototype. Um, most of the creation and, and testing was done on the back half of both semesters. So it was kind of jammed into one section versus the beginning felt a little bit slower with the user research, um, and some more ideation stuff. And it would have liked to have more time to prototype, um, Specifically, shout out to Olivia for being the designer on our team that executed that so well. 